Over a year ago, Energis announced that five consumer electronics companies would use its wireless charging technology. Yet, shareholders focused on a huge name missing from that list, and that is Apple. Today, Apple is still missing from the list of companies Energis works with. The company, though, is pushing towards the latest in wireless charging using radio frequency waves to enable both contact-based and at-a-distance wireless charging solutions for a complete ecosystem. So, why isn't Apple racing towards Energis's technology? Joining us here, the CEO. Stephen Rizzone. Also with us, we have Bloomberg Tech's Mark Gurman, who covers consumer devices and all things Apple. So, Stephen, why isn't Apple on your list? So, let's be clear. We've not said one way or another. We don't speak about our strategic partners. It's a, it's a very proprietary thing. What we can say is that we're working with the largest consumer electronic companies in the world and that you'll begin to see these devices now hit the market uh, in the next uh, few weeks and rapidly accelerating through the end of the year. So this technology has been promised for years, but we still haven't seen it yet. What is actually possible when it comes to long range wireless charging technology? So Energis represents wireless charging 2.0, which is really the the ultimate uh, implementation of this capability. It represents charging on a contact basis where you can take your device, your mobile device, uh, your smartphone, your headset, and quickly charge it on a mat. And at the same time, that same headset or that same mobile phone can be charged while you're walking through the office or while you're in your car with a uh, what up based uh, uh, transmitter in the dome light of, of your automobile. So the idea of wireless charging 2.0, which Energis is the major proponent, is really the ability to charge mobile devices from contact distance. When we're talking about distance, we're talking about distances of 15 to 18 feet. In, in terms of the, the different technologies, so how many different types of technologies? I know you have the, the, the contact base, then you have the long range. Uh, there's a medium range as well, right? I've seen the, at your offices the short range and the medium range in action. How long do you think will be until we see a, so like a 10 to 15 foot range for, for wireless charging? So our plan is to release uh, transmitters in three iterations. The first iteration is contact based transmitters. As I mentioned, you'll start to see those hit the consumer markets in the coming weeks. The next iteration is the first distance iteration. It's desktop. It's from three feet out or so. And we think that those uh, transmitters will start to hit the market late this year, early next year. The full size or the long distance transmitters with the ability to charge devices 15 to 18 feet will probably be hitting the consumer markets at the end of 2019 all while uh, a number of receiving devices, and this is very, very important, all re receiving devices are compatible with all transmitters. And so we expect to see a number of announcements in the coming months of receivers in a number of different verticals, including wearables, hearing aids, hearables. Right. So why has it taken so long for this technology to get to market? Well, it's not really a matter of taking so long. Energis as a company was really launched uh, four years ago and uh, when we did our IPO in, uh, in April, excuse me, in March of 2014. So we're a fabulous semiconductor company and in terms of coming to market with uh, new silicon, that's really actually moving very, very quickly. It's a very complex system though. I mean, we are a fabulous semiconductor company. That's our go-to-market strategy. But in conjunction with that, we develop reference designs that include antennas and software and hardware and also you have the whole regulatory element and that's a very very important consideration because this is brand new technology it's never been uh, released uh, or it's never been approved from the regulatory agencies and uh, we're actually paving the way for that which is one of the I think one of our big accomplishments and to be fair so Apple announced their air power wireless charger last year and it's already been about eight nine months since they announced it so Apple as much money and resources they have they haven't been able to pull this off yet and they have a Qi based charger. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between the Qi technology that everyone's talking about and whatever the underlying technology is in the, in the Energist suite of products? Absolutely. So Qi is a first generation technology. It's been around for 10 years or so. It's an inductive technology and it has serious limitations and I think those are some of the problems that uh, the implementers of this technology are starting to realize. It has foreign object detection problems. If you place a, a device, a Qi enabled 
cable device on a mat and it has keys attached to it or whatever, these will heat up and cause serious health hazards. It has interference problems. It has limited to no uh, independent positioning capability. You have to be very, very exact where you place the device. These are all very limiting factors in terms of the overall user experience and the utility. Wireless charging 2.0, which Energis is the, the leader, really eliminates all of those problems. We have no foreign object detection problems. We have no interference problems. We're completely free in terms of the positioning. You can drop these devices anywhere on the mat. And then at the same time, you have the ultimate benefit in that same receiver can now be lifted from the mat and be charging while you're walking around the studio. Mark, quickly. Optimistic? Optimistic. I mean, 2019 seems aggressive, right, for 10 to 15 feet, and we'll see. I mean, are you confident it's going to happen? It's it, the technology. It's all the same technology. It's all the same silicon. It's okay. a matter of how it rolls out. Thank you. Stephen Rizone, CEO of Energis. Mark German, you'll keep us honest. Thank you both. That is it for today's edition of Bloomberg Technology. Tomorrow we will be on the ground broadcasting from E3 in LA. I will be there. We'll talk to everyone. Don't miss it. This is Bloomberg.